Hello, welcome back to Rust 101. This is video 46. My name's Andy. We are doing some exercises to help us understand the stuff we've been doing about unsafe. Um, uh, the exercises themselves don't have any information. It's all just here in the code, so we'll stick here. And basically what we've got is an implementation of linked list, the one that we looked at in the last video um, with this raw pointer. Uh, and we got to fill in some of the implementation of the stuff. So basically... There's a linked list which holds a pointer to a node, and here's what node looks like. Uh, node consists of uh, like the actual value in that this item of the linked list, which is this U64, and then um, the next the next bit of the list, which is this rest thing. So it bounces back and forth between linked list and node, um, but that this node, this pointer to node here, can be null, and that means we've reached the end of the list. All right, so um, they've implemented for us like a thing that creates a list. This creates an, um, this default function creates an empty list. The way you create an empty list is you just make this uh, null. So you're basically saying um, the 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 you, the only thing is the end of the list. So just a null pointer. Um, they've also implemented a constructor here that constructs a linked list from a range of numbers. So we get given a range of u64s here. So like one dot dot three or whatever, uh, and this will construct a list, and they've done the work for us here. So what the way they do this, because it's worth getting our heads around this, is they start off with an empty list. So this this variable this starts off as a linked list just containing a null pointer. So that's like an empty list, and then it loops through um, the the range that we've been given, but reversed. So it starts with the last thing in the range we've been given. It creates a new one of these node objects, which is that that value, that last value in the the range we've been given, and a pointer to the empty list, or rather, well, the, a linked list, which is a, which it contains a pointer to um, the empty, or contains a null pointer. Um, so we're making a new node, basically. And then we make a new linked list that points at that node. And the way we do that is we get hold of the node, put it in a box, and then immediately extract it from the box again using into raw. And now with this, this is another linked list uh, struct, just like it was before. But now instead of it just containing a null pointer, it now contains a pointer to this new node thing that we've created. And we keep going backwards through the list, making a, a new thing that points at the old thing, that points at the old thing, that points at the old thing. Um, uh, so they kind of, that's why we've gone through in reverse, because we like the first thing we make is the last thing in the list. And at the end of that, we've got a linked list where, the, where it's all pointers to the next item, next item, next item. Uh, in this structure that bounces back and forth between linked list and node. So that's, um, they've done that for us, which is nice of them. So that's how we construct a list and we'll, um, we'll be thinking that way later. Okay. And they've also done for us a function that sums up the elements in the list. So, um, here is some of the structure that, uh, of some of the code we're going to be writing ourselves where every time we do anything with these lists, we've got to check whether it's null, because if it's null, that means we've already got an empty list in our hands. So the sum of an empty list is just zero. Like, sum just means add up all the numbers in the list. So there's no numbers in the list, so the answer is zero. Um, otherwise, there are some numbers in the list. So we need to dereference this pointer, which because we've checked that it's not null, and we know that the only way, we haven't completely gone through yet, but basically the only way this pointer gets created is with this type of structure here. So we know that if it's not null, it's a valid pointer. So um, that's why there's no kind of safety block here. We can add one here saying um, safety. Um, if, well, we've checked that self.0 is not null. And if it's not null, we know it's a valid pointer to a node. Um, so yeah, so now we dereference that and we get a node. So we know that the type of this thing, this pointer that we dereferenced is a node. Um, and we get hold of the current value in that node because each node holds onto like one of the values in our list. So now the sum is going to be whatever's in this value of the list plus the sum of all the other items in the list um, by calling off, calling, recursively calling the sum function with the rest of the list, because this node thing contains a current, which is the U64, as in the, the number in the list, and then rest, which is um, a linked list for the rest of the list. 
So that's all the code that they've written for us. They've written this um, way of constructing it from a range, way of adding them all up. Um, what they haven't done for us is they haven't implemented drop. And uh, they've made this iter, uh, whoops, this iter object. Oh, for goodness sake. They've made this iter object for us, um, which is basically a way of iterating through one of these linked lists, but they haven't implemented the next method for us. So we're going to need to implement essentially the, the, the core stuff of how to iterate through this list. Um, and they also haven't implemented this reverse function, which gives us um, a, uh, which reverses the list in place. So it changes the list we have into a list that reverses it. And they've given us some tests to check that this stuff works. Essentially, can I create and iterate through a list based on a range from zero to five? So when I basically, I should be able to iterate through it, collect that into a vector, and it should come out as zero, one, two, three, four. And also reversing it. So again, make a, a, a range zero to five, reverse the list. Now, when I iterate through it and collect it, it should come back, come out as four, three, two, one, zero. So let's start by running the tests. When we run the tests, they both fail um, because we haven't done this stuff yet. And actually, at the moment, they're panicking. So um, we've got a few things we need to implement. And the first thing we're going to implement is drop. Um, so let's do let's do it in a way that doesn't work to illustrate what can happen when you're using unsafe code. Let's implement drop as um, basically just delete the pointer. So we, we've got a linked list. We're, tro we're dropping it. Uh, so let's just um, box up the pointer we've got, which I think is box from raw, self.0. Uh, now that is unsafe because um, a box always has to be a valid pointer, whereas a raw pointer might not be a valid pointer. Um, oh, we need a semicolon. So, uh, I guess we need to put this into um, a variable which we then chuck away. So, let me explain what I'm doing here. So, self.0 is a, is a pointer to a node. Um, we're dropping our link list, so we want to delete everything that we uh, are responsible for. Normally, the stuff that you're um, responsible for gets automatically deleted, but because it's a raw pointer, we've kind of deliberately taken that responsibility on ourselves. Um, so what I'm doing here is giving the responsibility back to um, to Rust or to the bo this box that I'm creating. So essentially what I'm saying is create me a box out of this raw pointer. Now that's unsafe, as I said, because this pointer might not be valid. So that's why I have to wrap it up in an unsafe box. And then the type of this underscore here is box. And what I'm going to do is just drop it, just let it drop. So by giving it no name, what I could do is like give it a name and then just, I don't know, do nothing. Or I could just say, I could say drop X. Either, all of these are equivalent, basically saying, um, well, the reason I'm creating this box is just so that I can drop it because I know that um, uh, dropping it will um, do what I want, which is delete the node that's being pointed to. So does this seem reasonable? Let's try it. Uh, oh gosh, we got a nasty crash. Um, uh, let's see what we whether we got any interesting, useful error messages here. Um, we've got a panic. Um, uh, yeah, so we've got a panic saying um, uh, that something required that the pointer was non-null. Okay, so we didn't manage to get this to segfault. That's interesting. Um, because some kind of checking is happening. Perhaps if we were running in this in release mode, it would have said voltage. Should we try? Can we do minus minus release here? I'm not sure. Yeah, there we got a seg fault. Yeah, so seg fault means um, you did something illegal uh, in your code, which um, which indeed we did. We try we dereferenced a null pointer. So what happened was uh, self we 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 wrote this unsafe block. Notice we didn't write a like safety comment, which we always should write a safety comment. Um, we didn't write a safety comment explaining why it's okay to do this unsafe thing. And the reason is it's not okay. So what we need to do actually is we need to check whether it's null. So we had a, yeah. So what we can do is if self dot zero dot is null. Um, by the way, if I make any mistakes, um, 
in this code, which I may well do, and it may not all get caught by the compiler because that's the nature of um, unsafe code. Um, please let me know in the comments. This is really it's like like slightly outside of my comfort zone, so I could definitely get things wrong. So how about this? We say if it's not null, then we'll delete it. If it's null, we probably don't need to do anything with it, right? Because it's or there's no memory allocated there. And now we can write a little safety block. Safety. That's not how you spell safety. Safety. Um, we. It's exactly the same as this, right? It's exactly the same as this comment here. So let's just put it here. And then let's just put a little thing here saying uh, the box will be dropped here, dropping the node. Just to be try and be as clear as possible about what's going on. And this use of underscore has a very slightly different meaning from, from X, but in this case it doesn't make any difference to us. Um, it just gets dropped immediately. Um, there's no variable actually called underscore that gets created here. So we try it now. Um, and even in release mode, let's go back to doing it in debug mode. Um, the tests still fail, but we're not crashing anymore. And we're not panicking because of that null pointer problem. So um, we're doing okay. And uh, like, I, I think a question that I have here is, did we did we do anything at all? Like the, the program hasn't changed, and that's a little bit of a worry. Um, so I think what I'd like to do is just print something out saying, um, what we're doing when we drop so that we know that we've done something. At least that'll give us a little bit of reassurance that um, we did actually drop that memory, didn't leak it. So let's just say, get hold of the node, and let's just say something like um, dropping, dripping, dropping, um, something. And the thing, we, I guess we'll just we'll drop, we'll just print out um, so we got hold of this box, box of node. Um, and then we're just going to print out like the number that's in that node. So we know we're dropping the bit of memory that holds onto it. When we run this again, now we can see when we drop this list of zero, one, two, three, four, we are actually dropping the thing, the bits of memory that contain the zero, the one, the two, three, and the four, and same for, um, the second test. So we've got some reassurance there that the drop function is doing what it's it, what we wanted to. Um, we definitely could have made a mistake. I don't think we made a mistake here, but we definitely could have made a mistake here, and we wouldn't necessarily know that we were leaking memory. Uh, that's unsafe. It's unsafe. Uh, we've only got our own kind of comments here to like explain to us. We haven't really got a comment here explaining why we always manage to drop everything here, right? We just kind of it's kind of assumed that drop will drop everything. We could have left this empty. Uh, the tests would have still passed, but we wouldn't have like followed our responsibilities and we would be leaking memory all over the place. Uh, that's why I'm a bit nervous about it and I added the prints. Okay, so anyway, that's, I think, a correct implementation of drop. So let's have a look at trying to get some of these tests to pass. So let's look at an iterator um, over a linked list. So uh, it, th this iter function is actually constructed from a pointer to a node um, and then this thing that just um, helps it know, remember like what, what type um, it's, it's iterating through. Um, and we have to implement the next method. So right now the next method immediately says, nope, you've reached the end of the list. Um, so that's no good. We've got a little hint here saying, make sure we don't drop node values. So that's interesting, isn't it? So let's do a similar structure to what we need or we need it elsewhere, which is if self.0 is null, I guess that means we're at the end of the list, so we're going to return none. But if it's not null, that means we've got a node, so we can uh, get hold of that node, but um, we don't want to get hold of, we don't want to put it into a box or something like that, um, because it will then get dropped. And this is what this comment is warning us about. Don't, don't drop it. So what we can do is get hold of a reference to a node. Um, and the way we do that is we dereference it and then we take a reference to it all in one. And now we've got a node. Um, and now that won't actually work because this is unsafe. Um, oh, and we're not actually returning, I think. So let's, uh, in order for this to work, we need to return. Uh, a u64, so that's going to be n.current. So now we're returning something. 
Uh, oh, this shouldn't be. This shouldn't be. This should be. Sorry, it's not self dot zero here. It's just list. So. Um, like this. Um, oh, sorry. Self dot list. Obviously, self dot list. I wrote some C sharp over the weekend. I've forgotten you have to do self. All right. So now we've got code that looks approximately how we're going to look. Now there's a problem here, which we'll get to, which is that we're not moving on to the next thing in the iteration. So we'll get to that. But first of all, let's handle this. Um, this dereferencing this pointer because self dot list is a raw pointer. It's defined up here. Then starring it to say dereference it, give me the thing that you're pointing at is unsafe. Um, the Amazon's okay, but that's, um, Fine, so let's wrap it in an unsafe block to say, yes, we're pretty sure we're okay to dereference self.list and why. So let's explain safety. Um, we have checked that self.list is not null and any time it's not null, this is the same as the other comment really, it is valid just because I say it's valid, right? Like we only ever make this pointer from a box that it, that definitely was a valid pointer. So now we've um, we've done okay. We've got we've got the return value, which is a an option of a U64. So we've got hold of the um, answer to iteration through. But if we call this next many times, um, we're going to give back the same answer at the moment because we haven't moved on. So what we need to do is change self dot list. To, be, to point at the next thing, which is n.rest.0, right? So n.rest is a linked list, and linked list contains one thing, which is a pointer to a node, which is in the zero position. So we can just set this list, which is a pointer to a node, to be that thing. It doesn't matter if it's null here, because we're going to check next time round, we're going to check whether self.list is null. So that's okay. So I think we've implemented an iterator correctly for iterating through here. And that would mean, if we'd done it right, that the first test would pass, which it does. And it's suppressing the printouts from that first test now because um, uh, because it passed. So in a minute, we'll make it fail again to check that the, the drop stuff is still working. All right, so we've done... We've done the implementation of next. We followed those instructions. We didn't actually put it into a box, this pointer. We just converted it from a pointer into a reference. That's what this is. Dereference and then re-reference again, but this time as a reference as opposed to a pointer. That was unsafe because dereferencing a pointer is unsafe. Um, but we know it's okay because it's not null, and we know when it's not null, it's okay. All right, so um, we're doing okay. We've, Im we've implemented an iterator through the list. What about reversing the list? So what they say is the general approach is to start with a new empty linked list and move elements from self over to this new list. Finally, update self with the new list. All right, so if we look at how we constructed a list before here, it actually constructed it in reverse order. So that is going to help us. We, we now have a way of iterating through a list in forwards order, and we have a way of constructing a list in backwards order, which is this. So what we can do is just iterate through doing this, um, but... Um, but without this reverse part here, which made it work. So let's copy that code and stick it in here. And then think about how it works. So what it, what this does is it creates a linked list with a null pointer in it. So that means it's an empty list. And then it makes a node that points at that empty list saying, basically it's a list of one thing, right? It's the um, it's this item and then we're pointing at an empty list. And that means it's a list with one item in it. So um, the, the, what we're doing here is is linking through uh, uh, iterating through range. We don't have range here. What we have is we're going to iterate through self dot iter. I guess we just iterate through self maybe. Um, no, not iter maybe. Yeah. So we're we're inside a linked list. We've just implemented iter on that linked list. So now we've got a way of iterating through it. And uh, for every value in there. Um, so now this, this iter is going to give us just uh, U64s, right? So for every U64 that we get by working forward through ourself, we create a node. We set its current to be 
uh, that value we just got from iterating. And then it's rest, as in the pointer to the rest of the list, is just the current list that we've got. So now we've got um, a new thing called node, which is a node which points at the list we had before. So now we just wrap that up in a linked list by saying we box up the node, and then we immediately unbox it again. So now it's a pointer to that node, which we know, by the way, is a valid pointer, because it was made by making a box. Um, and we wrap that into a linked list, and now this thing called this, which is probably not the right answer, Let's call it um, a new list, maybe. Um, and then we just replace our new list that we started off. We started off with it empty. Now it's, the, it's going to be replaced by um, the new thing we just created, this linked list, which is appointed to the node, which points at the other, the previous list. And now all we need to do is replace, uh, hang on, is that right? Um, it's just yeah. It's just, it, we just once we finished, we just replace ourselves with that new list that we've made, and I think that is the answer. Um, yeah, we followed those instructions, and with any luck, we'll pass oh, both of our tests. Excellent. Happy about that. It's only warning us that um, we're not using functions, which is okay. Um, what I do want to do though is make both of our tests just fail so that I can check that they clean up their memory correctly. Let's just put add in a panic here. Oh, there's no semicolon. Uh, so let's just panic. Uh, okay, like that. Um, and just double check that we haven't broken anything, that our dropping code is still working. So yeah, um, when we run the reverse test, we construct a list and look, we drop the old list, the what zero one two three four, and then we do stuff, and then we drop the new list four three two one zero. So that's really comforting. Uh, and then th this is the first test, which has come out second this time, and it just shows that we just dropped the thing. So let's just think about this: um, the fact that we're doing two drops here, because that's interesting, um, and and encouraging, because it means we haven't leaked memory. Because essentially, we created a linked list here, and then we called reverse. And we ended up with another linked list. So this was a, a linked list zero, one, two, three, four. We reverse it. We've got another linked list four, three, two, one. It's, it's held in the same variable. But if we look at our reverse thing, what we actually do is make a completely new one and replace self with that new one. And it, we start to see how clever Rust is that and what it does for us. When we do this, replace self with this thing here, it actually drops the old self. Um, without us having to think about it. So that's why there's two drops going on here. Um, we, we drop our, we drop the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, um, uh, replace it with this, um, 4, 3, 2, 1 that we've made in the side, this new list thing here. Uh, and then later that gets dropped. That basically gets dropped at the end. Um, here. So get rid of these. Check our tests still pass. Let's uh, just run it in release to make sure. No crash happening in there or anything like that. So I think we've done it. As I say, uh, all quite out of my comfort zone. I may well have done it all wrong. Um, but what I've tried to do is document. Every time I used unsafe, I tried to explain why I think that thing is unsafe. All of this um, doing this has made me think, um, would it be exactly the same but safe if we replace this with an option of a box of node like this. Um, maybe you could tell me in the comments why that's not as efficient, or maybe it is as efficient, and we could make this safe. Uh, hope you enjoyed. Uh, more exercises on unsafe stuff coming next time. See you then.